thank you so much. Uh, my name is. Uh, yes. Russian lawyer working in Egypt, and my colleague from Kep. Okay, with you have on us uh, immigration and corporate attorney at Salam Khayyub Al Ukran. It's uh, our pleasure to have the meeting with you. Uh, Mr. Mutaz, you are not clearly audible to us. Okay, one second. Yeah, you, Mutaz Mutaz, can you hear me now? Okay, great. Uh, immigration and the corporate attorney at Salam Khayyub Al Ukran. And uh, it's our pleasure to have the meeting and attending the next webinar with my team member in team plan. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Olga and Mr. Mohab, it's an honor to have such distinguished professionals with us today. And now, as we set the stage of our agenda, I encourage everyone to make the most of this opportunity to look into the complexities of international trade, legal matters, and more. And your presence adds immense value to our discussions, and we look forward to an engaging and enriching session. So following to this, our agenda for today's session is packed with valuable insights. We will see into the current trade affairs between India and Egypt, shedding light on the dynamic business landscape. Additionally, Mr. Mohab Motaz will be guiding us through a detailed presentation of the intricacies of incorporating a company in Egypt and outlining the investment plan. This presentation aims to provide a comprehensive understanding of the regulatory framework offering valuable insights for Indian companies looking to expand their ventures in Egypt. So Mr. Mohab, now without further ado, I'd like to invite you to take the virtual stage and commence your presentation. Can you see our presentation now? I mean, is it uh, getting yes. visible on the screen? Yes, yes, yes. Clearly. So today, basically, we'll be making an overview of trading investments in Egypt uh, and basically how the trade uh, is uh, developing in spite of these current, let's say, uh, global challenges, global problems. And uh, as you know, that Egypt is, uh, I mean, it has been uh, like one of the ancient civilizations as well as uh, India, of course. Uh, when we went, you know, we also having like round tables meetings. And uh, two weeks ago, we went to the uh, Indian uh, uh, embassy and mm. had a meeting with the commercial department. And uh, uh, they agreed also that India as well is the ancient civilization. So it's great that uh, Egypt and India is cooperating with each each other and uh, has been having like stable uh, trading relations for a long time and uh, basically here we should uh, mention a different agreements that Egypt has been the party and uh, as well as um, uh, GAFTA, GAFTA agreement it was signed by 17 members in uh, 1988 and as well as uh, bilateral trade agreement between India and Egypt it has been enforced since 1978 and uh, as well as agreement with Russia and China. Hmm. And now it's uh, like smaller introduction uh, for the content provided in by the Egyptian law, the uh, investment law number seventy two. Mr. Moha, we are not clearly audible to us. Okay. You can hear me now. Yes. Yes. Uh, this is not an of content, uh, no, no, your voice, yeah. your voice is not coming, Mr. Mohab. Like it's clearly unclear. Audio. Yeah. Is, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you be clear now? Yes. 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 Okay. Hmm. Um, this is a simple introduction for the incentives that uh, stipulated by the investment Egyptian law number seventy-two, two thousand and seventeen. Okay, first one, um, the appropriate administrative bodies, the governmental bodies, can suspend any license or uh, project without providing a notice to, to this license, to these projects before 60 days. Hmm. So if the project made a violation, the company, the governmental bodies can't 
cancel his uh, project's license without providing him with a notice in 60 days. And after these 60 days, uh, the project managers should uh, like remake or remark the, these violations to mm. uh, in order to uh, like avoiding cancelling their license. And another incentive uh, that provided for the investors in Egypt who are owning a companies in Egypt can obtain a residence permit for one year and work permit for one year. Mm. And this, the only requirement for this that the company's capital should equal. Uh, US dollar 35,000. And the third one for the expats that will work in the companies in Egypt uh, and they are not owning any uh, any in, uh, any companies or they are not investing in Egypt. They are only an expats who will come to Egypt to do uh, an, uh, some, some work in these companies. Okay. okay, and the Egyptian okay. uh, law firm stipulated that the ratio between the, the Egyptian employees and the experts should be 10% to one, i.e. to appoint one expert, the company should have a valid social insurance file with 10 okay. Egyptian employees. Okay. And to appoint okay. two experts, the company should have 20 Egyptian employees, insured Egyptian employees, and so on. And for some branches and companies that who are dealing directly with the governmental bodies and uh, they are having an agreement with the governmental bodies, uh, such as the nuclear power planet, the MPPA, they are guaranteed an exemption from, uh, like, from experience uh, certificate for the experts, uh, exemption from the quota, like what we already mentioned in our previous point. Mm. Uh, And also, I think it's, uh, you can see now the slide on um, uh, Egyptian Suez uh, Canal. I think it's uh, uh, well known all over the world and uh, also in Russia, uh, as it's basically it's the main trade arteria that uh, facilitates, of course, trade. And uh, before the, uh, the trade cargo has to go all the way around Africa, but after in 1869, when it was completed, uh, basically, it constitutes now. I mean, the main trading instruments. And what I should be mention, what I should mention also in this respect is that uh, not only eighty percent of uh, global trade uh, basically is moved by sea, and it has been maintained by Suez uh, Canal, but it also it's modification, uh, modification in terms of in two thousand fourteen, um, Egyptian President uh, Sisi decided to start it. It's called. So it's uh, canal corridor area project, meaning it was uh, deepened and also now the cargo can uh, go two ways. Hmm. Basically, it's increasing its capacity. So so it's canal basically, I would say, uh, due to this uh, development, it made uh, Egypt one of the big uh, biggest uh, like uh, trade players in the region. So not only uh, geographical location, uh, it's of course it it has. Uh, you know, Egypt is uh, uh, located, I mean, between Africa and Asia, but also Suez Channel is adding value to Egypt as to make it more, uh, let's say, uh, stable global uh, trade hub in African region. Okay. Yeah, it's also, of course, I mean, uh, why we have now, let's say, uh, like Egyptian investments, uh, First of all, because of huge population, you know that officially we have uh, 100 uh, million people living in Egypt, but I mean, it's uh, increasing all the time, the population, as well as uh, we should mention diversified uh, economy. And uh, of course, it makes Egypt uh, resilient to crisis and, uh, you know, turbulence and uh, economic cycles. And uh, of course, it's uh, considered to be uh, number one country in African investment sector, and uh, as well as the top fifth uh, country that attract investors in the Middle East. And uh, recently, I mean, the last uh, four or five years, uh, we can see a uh, development of like uh, even uh, uh, I myself uh, in Egypt uh, since uh, like nine years and. Um, 
I mean, I, I see like development of, you know, like monorail, it's like the the line that connects uh, like the the uh, road on the air as well as uh, bridges, you know, roads. So the infrastructural projects are becoming uh, like uh, a priority for Egyptian government. That's why it has, I mean, it's uh, developing very fast. Great. Okay. And the geographic location of Egypt is unmatched advantages throughout human history for Egypt. Because uh, as you know, Egypt are are provided with uh, the Pacific Seas and the Arabian Seas and the African Seas. And uh, also the Egyptian government issued a lot of uh, decisions that are benefits the, the investment uh, especially for foreigners who are, who are seeking a residence permit in Egypt, um, like uh, last, uh, the last decisions issued by the governmental authorities for the real estate uh, residence permit that provides a lot of options for the foreigners who want to, mm. to have a residence permit, a long residence permit for from starts from one year to two years to five years. And also the public and the private free zone that are providing incentives and benefit for the, the project from taxes, from employees, from, uh, from for the experts too, from, from the, the experience certificates. And also uh, the golden license, the golden license for some specific sectors that providing incentives, and we will talk about it later. Hmm. And also, like what Dr. Olga said, the uh, Egyptian source panel. Okay, and now we will go for the incorporation of companies in Egypt. You will see uh, the recommended types of companies to be incorporated in Egypt. We have a lot of types, but these three mm -hmm. types are the most uh, recommended from our law firm and our Egyptian uh, economy because it's more easier for the for the foreign clients. First one, the joint stock company. Okay, the minimum number of partners is, is uh, three, and the maximum, like forever, uh, like you can, it, it will can be reach uh, nine, 90 partners or 100, something like that. And the minimum capital for the joint stock company is uh, 2,500 Egyptian pounds. It should be deposited. Uh, on three payments. First one, which will be 10% of the capital should be paid at the time of incorporating the company. And the other one, it will be increased to 50%. And uh, the remain uh, will be after five years. Okay. The second one is a limited liability company and it's the most common uh, type of the companies because uh, it's very simple and very smooth. Uh, the minimum number of the partners is two and the maximum uh, are 50. No minimum capital and uh, the, the capital of the company shouldn't be deposited at the time of the incorporation of the company. Okay. 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 Most likely, because you don't have the minimum capital, it's very easy to incorporate. Yes, it's, uh, you can incorporate the company with 1,000 Egyptian pounds and yes. you don't have to deposit it. The one person company. Very good option. Yes. Okay. Okay. The one person company is more. Uh, yes, is less than smoothest than the limited liability. It could be owned by one person, and the minimum capital now is uh, one thousand uh, one thousand Egyptian pound. It was fifty thousand, but now it's uh, decreased to one thousand, mm -hmm. and uh, paid before the incorporation. Of Okay. And now we have the branches and the representative offices in Egypt. The branch of the foreign company should be registered only to carry a specific project in Egypt with an Egyptian uh, company or the Egyptian government. It does not matter. It could, it could be a public sector or private sector. But it will. Uh, you, the branches could uh, practice any activities that they want, but all, it's only limited to the, the mentioned uh, I mentioned activity in the country. 
At the opposite, the representative offices are restricted from doing, uh, from practicing any traditional or uh, trading or uh, any activity unless they can, for six months, they can uh, like study the Egyptian market. And after the six months, they should decide uh, neither to create a company or to incorporate a branch. If they didn't decide after six months, the GAFI will cancel their uh, registration. And also, I would like to add Russian client that uh, when uh, they want to incorporate uh, like the branch of a Russian company, let's say in Egypt, they always it's very easy. But this is uh, here, it's very different legislation. Why? Because it requires like a contract. So a contract meaning it must be a specific activity practiced with any Egyptian entity, let's say. So you cannot just come inside the country and open a branch because you want it. Because we had, you know, many clients based on our experience who have been asking us, thinking and comparing like Egyptian legislation and Russian, I don't know, German, European, where it's basically a very normal activity. But here in Egypt, we would like to highlight again that you need a contract with any Egyptian entity before hmm. you would like to open a branch of a foreign company. Okay. And other clients, they already have existing uh, branch, local branch. And, uh, uh, Mr. Mohab, you're not audible. I'm sorry. Okay. And then yeah, yeah. I want to, uh, mm. to add another note that we already registered Russian branch and Russian companies in order to practice their activities in the uh, Baba project, nuclear project. For the, for the last slide, I want to talk about the importation activity because most of clients hmm. are willing to have the importation activity. Right. From one month, from one month, I would mention to the, the, the clients that the importation activity is not recommended because the Egyptian law regulated that the companies who want to uh, the company who want to uh, practice the importation activity hmm. the should be. 51% uh, owned by Egyptian and 49% owned by foreigners. So it will be make like it will be make the clients uh, more uncomfortable to incorporate this company. However, lately it's an uh, Egyptian government issued uh, an Egyptian legislator is uh, a new rule that you can incorporate the company and practice the import activity with 100% foreigners. It will be only four or five years, not 10 years like other companies. And it could be renewed five years more. And this move, I think it will uh, benefit the Egyptian economy because it will help the, the shortage in the currency, the current currency in Egypt. And it, will, it was a big issue in Egypt last uh, I think three years. Any of the foreigners they becoming hesitant when they see this requirement, right? That the uh, Egyptians will be owning 51%. But when they feel, you know, like more comfortable, when they can like uh, fully own the, the foreign company. Hmm. Okay. This, right? Okay. Um, okay. Uh, we can continue, or if you want to move to the next slide. Make because it... we are done with the presentation, just yes. the last slide. So it's not like uh, extra 20 minutes, it's like extra two minutes. If it's okay, yeah. No problem. Mm. Okay, so could you please uh, unshare your screen from your end? You can hear us? Or is that... Yeah. You can hear us? Yes, I'm saying that uh, is your presentation over? Just to summarize, the last slide would be great. Yes. You can come to me. Uh, I'm not able to hear you, Dr. Olga. Okay, this is the last slide you're saying. Okay, okay, continue, please. Mm. Yes, basically, it's the last, uh, let's say, uh, in, uh, like, 
incentive. It's like Egyptian golden license. Uh, and uh, Egyptian golden license, it's uh, provided by Gavi. And mm. also uh, it allows, you know, like, uh, uh, I think it's like deduction of uh, 30 to 50% of investment costs mm. will be available. And also... Uh, so Yes, yes. For the project in customs, in import and export, mm -hmm. uh, and you can make an agreement with the Minister of Finance regarding the taxes, uh, and they can uh, the, actually the state can uh, take a part of the costs of training the technical or for labor and uh, for providing the, the, the project with the unities. Mm. And, and any tax incentive may be, uh, may be created by the, cap uh, the cabinet position from the, the Egyptian uh, Minister of Finance. And uh, they can provide the project with uh, and the free of charges for some strategic activities, like uh, right. what mentioned in, in the Taba project. Okay. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, we will be happy to answer them. Otherwise, uh, yes. thank you so much. We hope that we covered all of the required. Uh, yes, topics. well, Mr. Mohab, uh, Dr. Olga, Mr. <laughs> Mohab, thank you for breaking down all those details for us. It was like a journey through time, like from ancient Egypt to the cutting edge investment projects happening now. So, great job on the mm. presentation. And I'm sure that mm. our members now have a good grasp of what it takes to expand their businesses to Egypt. And we are grateful for the depth of insights provided, like shedding light on various aspects, such as the historical significance of Egypt, trade agreements, legal considerations, and the impressive initiatives undertaken by the Egyptian government, like particularly the Suez Canal Corridor Area Project. So on behalf of Asian Exporters Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I would like to express our gratitude for Mr. Mohabs and Dr. Olga's time, effort, and expertise. And your commitment to sharing your knowledge has undoubtedly contributed to the success of this webinar. So now, as we bring this insightful webinar to a close, I would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed experts and each participant who joined with us today. To all participants, thank you for joining us today and we look forward to the continued collaboration and explorations of new horizons in the world of trade and investment. So we are committed to fostering knowledge sharing and collaborations and it has been a pleasure to have you with us for this session today. So looking ahead, I am excited to share that AECCI is dedicated to bringing you more webinars on a variety of topics like collaborating with experts from different countries. And we believe in the mm. power of knowledge to connect us and drive positive change. So stay tuned for upcoming sessions where we will continue to explore and learn together. And your continued support is invaluable to us. And we look forward to welcoming you in our future webinars. So once again, a very sincere thank you to to, to our experts and participants and wishing you all a continued success and learning in your interviews. So thank you and see you again very soon. Have a great day. And we, want, we want to apologize for exceeding our time of the, of the webinar. We are so sorry, but as I mentioned that they covered all of the required information and I hope that you will have benefits and information. From this. Totally, totally. <laughs> Okay, we'll see you soon, Mr. Mohab. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.